Hello, welcome back to the channel, and this is part three in my summer holiday road trip. This week you're going to join us starting in John Groats, where I'll go to a ferry to look at the local sort of rocks, the seabirds, and to try and see if I can get a look at some orcas that frequent the area. Also take a look around John Groats, which has got a brewery, it's got a distillery, it's even got a Christmas shop that is open year round, which I just found a wee bit bizarre. We'll then move on to just outside Wick, which is Castle St. Clair, which is absolutely stunning. We got there on an amazing day as well, so I'll give you a wee look about that with some lovely drone footage. Uh, we then finish up in Aviemore, uh, just outside Aviemore actually, in the Cairngorms, in a lovely sort of forest next to a lock. A wee bit of a hodgepodge this week as well. It ends in a bit of a sort of quick note, so apologies for that, but it's just a lot of the footage that I did have. We actually moved on to Fife, and I just didn't want to include it. I didn't think it fitted very well in the video. I have said it before, I'm not a full-time vlogger. A lot of these people that release videos every single week, when they film content, they're heading out specifically to do so. They've got a script, they've got items that they tick off and stuff like that. That is not what my channel is. I have got a real full-time job. I have got a family. I'm far too busy. I'm just trying to capture moments of the trips that I take out to show you a sort of real representation of me floating around the country. But I think there's some nice footage in this one as well, so I wanted to show it with you, so hope you enjoy. Tickets for the ferry can be purchased right next to the harbour and the boat itself just leaves, so just behind the famous sign. You then head out into the waters in between the mainland and Orkney. It can get quite choppy as you can see here, depending on the time of the tide. However, the boat coped to it absolutely no problem at all and in no time it absolutely just flattened out into a nice sea for saving in. You then head round to Duncan's Bay Head, which has got the lighthouse, you've got lovely views of that, and you start to encounter the absolute tens of thousands of seabirds that you see throughout the journey. You start to get told over the tannoy about the different types of rock formations, the landslides, and how these famous Duncan's Bay stacks were formed over time. They're amazing to get up close and personal way. It's almost like something for uh, Jurassic Park when you get to see it. You also get to see the caves and stuff in the rock faces which you can't quite make out there and you get really up close and personal with the birds. There's loads of different kind including everybody's favourite which is the puffin. You're that close you can genuinely smell them uh, for the nest as you can imagine. Not great but an amazing experience and then we headed back in to explore Johnny. We then headed into John O'Groats Brewery. Always have to stop in at a brewery any chance I get. It's a lovely place, it's made up of a mixture of like a, a shop, visitor experience, the actual brewery itself, which is really, really small, and an incredible old style pub with a beautiful open fire, which I would have loved to have spent a bit more time on if I wasn't actually driving later on that day. We then headed over to the Eight Doors Distillery, which is new since my last visit. They don't have any of their own whiskey ready yet, but they do have others that you can purchase, and you can also enjoy a drink inside as well. The next stop was a look around the shops, including the Christmas shop that is open all year round. Now, not really my cup of tea, I'm going to be honest with you, but my partner loves this. He's a massive fan of Christmas, so if you're the same, you're going to love this shop. It's got just about everything that you can imagine in relation to Christmas. So we've came about half an hour for John O'Groats um, and we're here, Castle St. Clair, Geringo, probably not how you pronounce it again. And the reason that we've came here is we've found this wee spot on Park for Night. If you're not sure what Park for Night is, it is an app that is for campers and camper vans basically and it's really good, it's got maps and you zoom in on where you are and it highlights campsites, pull-in places and places like this. I think this is run by the council um, and it's £10 for the night. There's no facilities, literally just a bin which is great but it's a place that you know that you're not going to get moved on or, or anything like that and it's right out the way as well. Um, Wick is just down there but it's enough of a drive that you're sort of out of the main drag and we've also got a lighthouse there as well. The fogs came in a wee bit. I was going to get the drone up um, and get a wee bit of footage, but the fogs came in, so it doesn't look likely. Don't think I'm going to do much the rest of the night. The distillery at John O'Groats, I managed to pick up a couple of wee miniatures, one of their blended and one of their single malts. Um, so I think probably just have them and a couple of beers. Uh, the night and then the plan, you can hear the baby in the background, the plan, the mora, is to move on to uh, Inverness, we want to go to the shops there and get the Wayne 
uh, a pair of, sort of shoes because he's been desperate to walk but obviously with gravel and stuff like this outside just something a wee bit comfier for his feet and maybe go to Channery Point to hopefully see the dolphins. We've been three times before and never actually managed to see them. This is becoming a wee bit of a theme where we don't get to see the orcas or we don't get to see the dolphins at Channery Point. So I, I think that might be the plan tomorrow. So might not catch up with you tonight. Most likely probably tomorrow and we'll see what we get up to. Good morning. So it is Monday morning and it's absolutely glorious. There was quite a lot of sort of fog last night which sort of hindered the view and my ability to get the drone up and stuff but this morning it looks like this blue skies sun shining down and flat seas don't know if you can see off in the distance just that headland but that was the sort of furthest point we came yesterday on the boat for Johnny Groats just sort of poked around there a wee bit for a wee look in the bay and back again. Um, but I'm going up to this Castle St Clair. Just going to take a wee walk along and see see what it's like. I'll hopefully get the drone up and get a wee bit of footage around about it as well. And then I think maybe the same with the lighthouse just off in the distance there. And then we're going to head into Inverness. I'm going to go back, get washed, get changed. We're going to head into Inverness which is about two hours away and just sort of have a day floating about there. Just um, in the city, my partner likes cities, so gonna go in there. The baby needs to get a wee pair of shoes, so we're gonna go and get him some shoes. Um, I want to visit the Victorian markets. Victorian market in Inverness used to be just that, it was just a sort of market, sold all, do all sorts of different stuff, all sorts of different wee stalls. But a couple of years ago, I think maybe two years ago now, um, it had a big revamp and it's got a lot of sort of food producers and drink and stuff in there. So hopefully we're going to visit there for some lunch. And then I just wander about Inverness for the day and, and see what we can see. Hopefully this weather keeps up. It's about a two hour drive away, so we're trying to coincide it with the baby's nap, um, which is what we've been sort of trying to do around most of this journey. So that's a sort of loose plan that we have, but let's get a wee look at this castle here it's good there's loads of wee sort of signs about telling you um about the place basically and about the castle and stuff like that i've not actually read any of them to be honest so i'm not going to kid on that i know who owned the castle or when it was built or anything like that i just know it looks like a big interesting ruin i'd like a couple of photos yet and it's a nice walk out as well so let's go and get a look just as we approach the castle again i don't know if you can tell because I don't have zoom on a GoPro, but over here in the distance, um, so sort of just there, is Keys Castle as well, or Keys Castle. No idea how to pronounce it. I've no idea how to pronounce most of these places, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but I obviously a bit of a hot spot for castles. No wonder if you were uh, of the ability to build a castle back when castles were the thing to be building, and you could build it in a place like this. Why would you know? Absolutely stunning location. Obviously, stunning on a day like this. There's going to be days where it's pissing a rain or snow and gale force winds and, and everything as well. So, but aye, the day, the day like this, dead easy to understand why you would have to build it. So, getting close now. There you go. So, this board just gives you a wee bit of history starting in the 1300s, 1379 all the way through to about the 1700s, the journey and the different arrows and stuff that, that owned the castle. But it's still really, really impressive and what you probably can't see here, I will get the drone up in a few settings, but we've also got like a large sort of ditch that goes down there and I think right down to the sea. And you can see that it's actually just built right up into the big columns that come out of the sea. Really impressive, I always find that amazing, like, I know nothing about building to be perfectly honest with you, even like modern stuff, but the fact that these buildings could have been put up in the 1300s right on a sort of exposed sea location on top of um, these sea cliffs, into the sea cliffs and large parts of them still to stand today is absolutely mental really really crazy um, so I'm going to get the drone up, get a couple of photos maybe a bit of video One of the best things about Castle Sinclair is you can actually get access inside it for a walk around really cool entryway walking over this bridge into the thick walls
when you're walking around there's lots of little nooks and crannies to get into. I really love looking at these bits where you can see the old sort of window holes that people will be able to look out and what a view it was, especially in a day like that. I love this part here, I have absolutely no idea what it had been used for back in the day. Sort of really tight walls and stuff gives you the feeling that there's maybe like a dungeon or they're leading down to a dungeon and a spectacular view outside. I was able to get the drone up and you're able to see how crystal clear that water is. I think I'm actually going to return it at some point in the future. I'd love to take my free diving gear and go for a swim in those waters as well. But the place is absolutely spectacular. I was so, so lucky with the weather as you can see here. It was really, really warm. Real blue skies, flat cam seas, and the colour of the water was absolutely incredible. Definitely one that you should put on the list if you've been lucky enough to visit it. Well there you go, that was Castle St Clair, just outside Wick in the north east coast of Scotland. Absolutely beautiful, especially in a day like this, it just makes it so much easier. So, going to get back to the van, it is just about time for baby's nap, which will try to coincide with the drive to Inverness. And when I get to Inverness, get washed, get changed, and we'll go out and explore Inverness. So, I'll catch up with you when we arrive. Hello, so spent a couple of hours in Inverness, nothing exciting which is why I didn't film very much. We got the wee man his first pair of walking shoes, which is absolutely class, so hopefully that will help him when he's wanting to walk about. Uh, we went for a bite to eat, went to Tesco, got some fuel, all very very boring stuff. Um, we've now came to just outside Aviemore, the place is called I think Loch and Eileen probably or almost definitely pronounced completely wrong again um, but it looks a good wee place it's not an actual campsite as such but you pay £10 uh, per night just to stay in a wee sort of car park which is absolutely fantastic and it's beautiful this is literally two seconds for the van so I think there's a good chance in the morning, morning I'll come for a swim and get myself in there for a wee dip so we're just going to take a wee walk around it's nearly his bedtime so we're not staying out very long at all, just a wee walk around the woods and we're going to get ourselves back to the van probably a bit of an early night and then we'll see what the Mora brings and I'll probably catch up with you then I know I said I'd probably catch up with you morning, but I wanted to show you these these are what is called blaberries now I'm not an expert, I know they're definitely edible and I know they're delicious but I think they are a member of the blueberry family They are quite sour than now, but they also go quite sweet. And you can see the colour you get in your hand when you pick them. I always see on YouTube and stuff, or Scandinavians have got a wee device. I um, don't think it's just Scandinavians to be fair, but that's the people I've seen with Where they basically rake the bushes, and it keeps the bushes intact, but gets you a big... Uh, load of the, the blaberries um, but I really really nice so if you see them out and you know what they are definitely then give them a go but that's me I'll catch up with you tomorrow So guys, thank you very much for watching this week. I hope you enjoyed it, even though it was a wee bit of a sort of random 
hop around the country. Uh, next week's video is very, very good in my opinion, or at least the location's very good. Uh, it's Loch Ken Shepherd's Huts in Dumfries and Galloway. And I'll also head to Lag and Life for having an incredible lunch. So I'll get that out. I always say next week's video. It probably won't be next week, but I'll get it out as soon as I can. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one.